Imagine slicing through a narrow stretch of land linking two vast oceans. That's exactly what the Panama Canal does. Located right in the middle of Central America, this incredible human-made wonder links the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, cutting weeks off shipping routes and changing global trade forever. In this video, we'll uncover the story of how the Panama Canal came to be, uncover the mechanics behind its operation, and explore the critical role it plays in today's world. We'll also shed light on the challenges the canal faces and why despite these hurdles, it remains an essential part of global commerce. Stick around as we reveal the secrets and emerging challenges of one of the world's most important waterways. Crafting videos like this takes countless hours of research, scripting, and editing to ensure we're delivering top-notch content. If you find this valuable, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to our channel. The Panama Canal stands as one of the greatest engineering achievements of the modern era, built to solve a critical logistical problem. It provides a quicker and safer maritime route between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Before its construction, ships had to navigate the perilous and lengthy route around the southern tip of South America. Before the Panama Canal, the journey from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean was a monumental challenge. Ships were forced to navigate the treacherous route around Cape Horn at the southern tip of South America, a passage infamous for its unpredictable weather and hazardous waters. The journey severely tested the endurance of both ships and their crews. For instance, a voyage from Europe with a stop in New York before continuing to San Francisco would stretch over 15,000 miles between the two American cities and take an entire month to complete, twice the time it now takes in the Panama Canal. The construction of the Panama Canal began in 1904, following a failed attempt by the French under Ferdinand de Lesseps in the 1880s. The U.S. government saw the canal as a strategic and economic asset. By linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, the canal promised to significantly cut shipping times and costs, enhancing American maritime dominance and facilitating faster naval and commercial vessel movement. The U.S. recognized that controlling this crucial trade route would not only boost its economic position, but also strengthen its military capabilities. This vision was realized through a massive investment, totaling approximately $375 million, making it the most expensive construction project in U.S. history at the time. This amount included $10 million paid to Panama for the rights to build and control the canal, $40 million to the French company that had previously attempted and failed, and $12 million spent on fortifications to safeguard the canal from potential threats. The construction involved around 43,000 workers and took a decade to complete. The canal was completed in 1914 and became a cornerstone of global maritime trade. In 1977, under the torrijos carter Treaties, the United States agreed to transfer ownership and control of the Panama Canal to Panama. This transfer was finalized on December 31, 1999, marking the end of U.S. control and the beginning of Panama's stewardship of this vital waterway. The Panama Canal officially opened on August 15, 1914. Initially, the annual traffic was about 1,000 ships, but this number quickly increased. Today, the canal handles an average of about 35 vessels per day and more than 12,000 a year. Today, it operates through a series of carefully designed processes that move ships efficiently across the Isthmus of Panama. At the heart of the canal's operation is the sophisticated lock system, which raises and lowers ships as they transit between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. When a ship approaches the canal, it first enters a lock chamber. The Panama Canal features three sets of locks, Miraflores and Pedro Miguel on the Pacific side and Gatun on the Atlantic side. Each of the original locks is approximately 1,000 feet long and 110 feet wide, accommodating a variety of ship sizes. Once the ship is in the lock chamber, massive gates close behind it. Water is pumped into the lock from Gatun Lake, lifting the ship up to 26 meters, that's 85 feet, to match the lake's level. This process takes about 8 to 10 minutes, and it's repeated as the ship progresses through the canal's locks. After being raised, the ship navigates across Gatsun Lake, a vast artificial reservoir created to supply the canal with water. This lake is crucial for maintaining the necessary water levels in the locks, ensuring that ships can continue their journey. As the ship approaches the opposite side of the canal, it enters another set of locks. Here, the process is reversed. Water is drained from the lock chamber, gradually lowering the ship back to sea level. After the ship is lowered to sea level, it exits the final lock and continues its journey into the ocean. The entire transit typically takes about 8 to 10 hours. This duration accounts for several factors. 
The canal spans approximately 50 miles across the Isthmus of Panama, and the journey involves navigating through a series of locks that lift and lower ships by up to 85 feet. The process includes the time it takes for ships to pass through the locks, travel across Gatun Lake, and accommodate any delays caused by traffic or varying ship sizes. Gatun Lake plays a crucial role in the operation of the Panama Canal. This artificial lake supplies the necessary water for the lock system. However, the canal's reliance on Gatsun Lake also make it vulnerable to changes in weather. Severe droughts, for example, have caused water levels to drop significantly, leading to restrictions on the number of ships that can pass through each day. To keep up with the growing demands of global shipping, the Panama Canal has undergone significant expansions. The most notable is the Panama Canal expansion, completed in 2016. This project, also known as the third set of locks, introduced the Neo Panamax locks, which are much larger than the original locks completed in 1914. These new locks can accommodate ships up to 400 meters, that's 1,312 feet long, and 49 meters or 161 feet wide, allowing the canal to handle more and larger vessels. The Neo Panamax locks can accommodate up to 12,000 TEU, that's 20 foot equivalent units a significant increase from the 5,000 TEUs of the original locks. This expansion has been vital in keeping up with global shipping trends and increasing traffic. Continuous upgrades to the canal's infrastructure, including maintenance and modernization of existing locks, are crucial for maintaining efficiency and handling increasing traffic. In 2023, the canal managed 12,638 transits, transporting over 510 million tons of cargo. Container ships, which are critical to global supply chains, make up the largest share of this traffic. In the same year, these vessels alone accounted for 2,787 transits. This highlights the canal's pivotal role in facilitating the movement of goods, and even operating under challenging conditions. The canal's revenue saw a notable increase. In 2023, revenues rose by 14.9% to $4.97 billion, even though the canal handles slightly less cargo compared to the previous year. Specifically, it moved 511.1 million PCUMS tons in fiscal year 2023, down from 518.5 million tons in fiscal year 2022. This revenue boost is largely attributed to higher tolls and effective revenue management strategies. But how does the Panama Canal generate revenue, you ask? The answer lies in toll fees. Tolls are essential for the canal's operation and maintenance. With the average fee for a Panamax container ship around $45,000 per transit, while a Neo Panamax ship can incur fees of approximately $80,000. Larger vessels can pay significantly more, with some tolls exceeding $800,000. Overall, tolls make up the majority of the canal's revenue, contributing to about 74.56% of the total. Additionally, the canal earns income from maritime services, electricity sales, portable water, and other sources. Despite the impressive feats of engineering and ongoing upgrades, the Panama Canal faces several significant risks. One of the primary challenges is water scarcity, particularly during prolonged droughts that can drastically reduce the canal's operational capacity. This issue is exacerbated by climate change, which is expected to bring more extreme weather patterns to the region, further straining the canal's water supply. The Panama Canal Authority is exploring various solutions, including building new reservoirs such as the Indio River Dam and Tunnel and improving water management systems to ensure a steady water supply, especially during droughts. These long-term solutions are expected to cost about $2 billion and could take up to six years to finish. Additionally, competition from alternative shipping routes such as the Suez Canal and even the potential Arctic routes poses a long-term threat to the Panama Canal's dominance in global trade. The Suez Canal connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea poses a significant competitive threat to the Panama Canal. It offers a direct route between Europe and Asia, eliminating the need to navigate around Africa. This short could allow 7 to 10 days of time being saved as the journey is reduced by 12,000 kilometers, compared to using the Panama Canal, making it a more efficient option for shipping between South Asia and Europe. With its latest expansion completed in 2023, the Suez Canal can now accommodate larger vessels, further intensifying competition with the Panama Canal for global shipping traffic. The Northern Sea Route, which crosses the Arctic Ocean, presents an even more significant challenge. 
In theory, distance savings along the NSR can be as high as 50% compared to the traditional shipping lanes via the Suez or Panama canals. For example, a voyage from Japan to Europe typically takes about 29 days via the Cape of Good Hope and 22 days via the Suez Canal. In contrast, the NSR can shorten this journey to just 10 days. However, navigating the Arctic presents challenges including extreme weather and ice coverage which require specialized icebreaker ships and technology. Despite these upcoming threats, the Panama Canal continues to be heavily utilized for several key reasons. Its strategic location remains unmatched providing the shortest maritime link between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The 2016 expansion has also enabled it to accommodate the larger vessels that dominate modern shipping, keeping it relevant in an era of growing global trade volumes. Moreover, the canal's ability to adapt and upgrade its infrastructure ensures that it remains a vital artery for international commerce. The combination of these factors solidifies the Panama Canal's role as an indispersable route for global shipping, despite the challenges it faces. So there you have it, a journey through the Panama Canal's incredible history, from its groundbreaking construction to its crucial role in today's global trade. From its origins as a groundbreaking engineering project to its pivotal role in global trade, the canal has transformed the way goods move around the world. David Mekolo, in his book The Path Between the Seas, captures the essence of this achievement perfectly. He describes the creation of the canal as one of the supreme human achievements of all time, highlighting the immense effort and sacrifice involved. The 50 miles between the oceans, he notes, were among the hardest ever conquered by human ingenuity, reflecting a timeless desire to bridge divides and connect people. The canal stands as a testament to human determination and creativity, embodying the spirit of civilization. The canal's expansion in 2016 with its new Neo Panamax locks has allowed it to handle more and larger ships, keeping pace with modern shipping demands. Despite facing issues like water shortages and increased competition, the Panama Canal remains essential, facilitating over 12,000 transits and handling 510 million tons of cargo each year. Its strategic location and continuous upgrades ensure it stays crucial in international trade. Every year, more than 14,000 vessels rely on this waterway, underscoring its ongoing significance in global commerce. As we marvel at this incredible feat of engineering, we're left to wonder, what future innovations will shape the way we connect and trade across the globe?